Ladies and gentlemen, I'm in super bummed out mode. You're probably wondering why the car's sitting here. Uh, that's because Katie actually broke down. I went to the grocery store and uh, as, I'm, as I'm walking towards the car to get in it, there's a guy standing at my car while sitting in his car. And as soon as I started it, he got out of his car. And he's like, hey, he's like, I've been sitting here waiting. I've been wanting to know how this thing sounded. And when I started it though, it was like the battery was dead because uh, it, it turned over real, real, like slowly and it fired right up. But then it sat there and idled okay, had no problems idling. And then uh, I actually um, took off and it was real, like it, you could tell it was starving for fuel or something. Like when I give it gas, it doesn't really have any power. It didn't want to move. So I took, I brought up the road just a little bit. Um, I wanted to get it home, but I didn't want to go through town. So I ended up stopping here at Final Drive Auto Sales and brought her over here. So it's in, in line. So a tow truck can pick it up. And I got AAA coming to pick it up right now. So definitely bummed about it. Not sure what's wrong. Uh, but one of the weird things is too, is my entire dash cluster, like the RPMs, the speedometer, um, everything was completely off. So I don't think it's just a fuel pump. I think it's something electrical also, maybe a ground which is even more of a bummer because that's just more diagnosing I have to do and trying to figure out what the problem is. So uh, we'll see what happens here. Uh, definitely hoping it's uh, something easy, but knowing my luck, it's probably not. It's probably not something easy. Uh, and I don't have the money to throw at it until I figure the problem out. So I'm um, not sure what this is gonna mean, but uh, hopefully we will figure out a problem and be able to fix it. Quick update for you guys. My dad showed up and I uh, found out the battery was actually dead. So I guess my alternator's bad. So he's like, get in it and let's get it home as quick as we can. But the problem is I pulled out and I thought I couldn't shift gears. It was the only, I could only go in first. I couldn't go second, third, fourth, fifth. Uh, when I push the clutch in, it goes in the neutral. Um, so I don't know what the problem is. Um, I'm currently in fourth gear now. I was able to finally start shifting. Uh, I called my dad and I can't get it to go into gear. Then all of a sudden it just slipped in. So I have no idea what's going on with the car right now. Um, but I got to get it home as fast as I can to so try to get this thing uh, back in the garage so I can work on it. But just want to give you guys a quick update. All right, guys, uh, just got it home, her home, and um, she is back in her enclosure. But it's really, really weird. So I've never driven a vehicle before where the alternator was actually in the process of going out. Um, but driving it home from that place, I'm sorry, driving it from that place to home was uh it was weird because it was backfiring a lot um i could not like i said earlier i could not get it out of first gear there for a little while and then once i got it out of first gear well no sorry i could go into first gear i was in neutral i just couldn't go into any other gears but once i was able to shift again it shifted fine um it had some power but whenever i was getting ready to pull in my driveway i was about 50 yards from my house the car completely shut off uh, and prior to that, no matter what gear I was in, if I give it any gas at all, it just bucked real bad. So I think that was just because I don't know. So um, I got it in the driveway. I had no power steering at the time. So I, I was, was really, I took the turn kind of wide so I could make sure I get in. And then my dad was able to drive this truck around the front of the car. And um, luckily my jumper cables are in my Jetta, which my wife has at work, but I have another pair here in the garage. Uh, we use those because my dad's were too short for how the car was sitting and things um we had and there was a wall on, on the there was a wall a stone wall on the one side where we had to get the the cables on to so we used another pair got the car started again and got the car put away like i said back in her enclosure so i am because of all the problems it was having um with the backfiring and and then um the fuel not obviously wasn't getting enough fuel the fuel pump sorry yeah the fuel pump wasn't turning on when i would turn the key all the dash lights were off. Because of all of that, it makes sense that it would be an alternator, meaning the battery's not being charged, meaning things aren't gonna work that require electricity. However, the thing that I'm really, really surprised by or perplexed with is why I couldn't shift. Like my dad said, everything else makes sense, but that is really odd. Um, it's, I mean, it's an older car. I can't imagine it would require electricity to, to allow you to put the car into gear. I mean, it's, it's a manual. So I, I don't know what that is about. 
Um, we are going to get a new alternator for the car. It has been um, at least 10, 11 years since I replaced that alternator. Uh, it only has like 20,000 miles on it, but it's still old. It's still 10 years um, old. So we're going to get a new alternator put in the car. I don't know how long it's going to be until I can get that. Um, but uh, <laughs> it'll be in this video for sure. Um, but that was my experience today. And then I, I was even more bummed because my kids had a little mini Halloween parade at their school that I uh, was going to go to at 2 o'clock. And when we when we when we left uh, the place where the car was sitting originally, I, it was 20 minutes till two. Got the car home, and of course, then when I shut off again, I'm like, oh, I gotta jump this thing again. Took more time to get it back in, into the garage and stuff. But I, I actually pulled out of my driveway at 1:56 and got to the school at 2:01. And then by the time the kids got to me in the parade, I was already there for a while and was able to record them and see them, which was awesome. So ended up being a perfect day, perfect time. Uh, could have been a, a heck of a lot worse, so I'm glad it wasn't. I was very blessed that it happened the way it did and was able to go to the school. So that was how my Friday has been going so far. <laughs> Holy crap, was that hard. Woo. All right, people. That was not easy. Turning the wheel when a car's off is, and especially these big wide tires, not very easy to do, but thank God I had my amazing wife here to help me. Anyways, I am going to get this charged up. Reason being, my dad is gonna come over tomorrow and we are going to check to make sure that it is in fact the alternator, which pretty darn sure it is, but we just wanna make sure for certain. So we're gonna charge this up. Fully charge it today, and then dad's gonna come over tomorrow, and we are going to find out for sure if that's what it is. There we go. She is charging, she's currently at 50%, and we will see how long it takes to get to 100. We interrupt this program for an important news announcement. People, I got sent something in my P.O. box that was extremely exciting because I've always wanted something like this um and uh i wasn't gonna pay for it um so this is really awesome i do already have something similar to it and i'll give you guys a very very big clue this which was given to me by my father-in-law it's a very nice one it's got 3100 psi gas powered but problem is the the pressure no longer works i can't actually power wash with it so i got sent check this thing out <clears throat> Grand Falls Pressure Washer Pro with a 100-foot auto-retract hose. It is by a company called Giraffe Tools. The box is a little ding there, but <clears throat> Giraffe Tools. And um, I'm going to set this thing up. I'm actually going to put it, it actually mounts on your wall. And I'm actually going to put mine right here. I think it would be a good place to have it because I'm real close to the outside. And I have an outlet right here I can plug into. And since I don't have a um, water hookup in my garage, I'm just gonna run my hose from the house into the garage whenever I wanna use it, which will not be a big deal at all. I already do that when I wash the cars anyways. Not much to it. This is the unit right here. It has handles on both sides for you to be able to lift it up. This is where your hose, your water source goes in at. Uh, this is your on and off switch. Of course you have um, some stuff back here, the, the plug and stuff, and uh, the bracket that hangs on the wall. But we'll get there here soon. And it also comes with all the accessories. This is actually to be able to foam, use soap on your car. It's pretty cool. It comes with that. Uh, these are your nozzles. These are This is some kind of a filtration system for probably the, the thing itself. We'll get there at some point too. Uh, these are the screws and lags to put into the wall. A level is probably just given to you to make sure that you get it level on the wall. Here's a hose. And then the gun. Uh, there are things on their website that you can like upgrade to like uh, bigger, better guns. Um, but for I think what I'm gonna need it for it's gonna be perfect just like that folks you have it I have it I have it good and level 
it's directly in the center of the section I want it to be in. And the next step is to put the pressure washer down over top of the bracket. So this being the back of the unit, these little black slider things right here on both sides, that's where the bracket slides up in. And there's a metal part up here that it actually hits against to stop it. And also, just so you guys know, it's never safe to power wash animals, people, or electric outlets. Very important. So now I'm going to pick this thing up and we're going to put it on its bracket over there. Here we go. Seems really, really, really sturdy. I don't hear any cracking. Looks good to me. Okay. So we, what you guys want to do now is take this part and attach it to this little hose they give you. You want to tighten this to the end of your garden hose here. Sorry, the black end. You want to get that. They say to use a wrench, so I have a wrench here to use for that. And just tighten this as, as tight as you can by hand. And then this silver part here actually attaches to this. Hope you guys can see that. Okay, guys, I think that's good. So this is tight to that. This is tight to this hose right here that runs down here. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna eventually put this like attach it to my wall real nice. But I can actually attach this now to my garden hose that runs from my house. And now when I turn the water on at my house, this will fill up with water, which we're gonna do next. All right guys, so my unit is now set up. And as you can see here, it looks very neat in, in the corner here. That hose, like I said, is going to eventually be hanging down. I gotta get some uh, hose clamps to put along my wall there. But as you guys can see, this pin right here is actually just a pin that you put in here just to keep this thing from rolling. Uh, it's like a safety pin. This right here is a container, like I said, for um, doing like foam, like a foam cannon. Uh, this year just goes right on the end of the gun. But it's nice that it actually comes with a little storage place for that. Uh, this right here, of course, is the gun. It hangs down here. But before I get to that, I just want to show you one more thing. This is the on and off switch. And of course, I have it plugged into a normal 110 outlet. And this right here is the coolest part of the entire thing, in my opinion. Um, this right here actually will go back and forth like this as you're pulling or retracting the hose. This way it always rolls up perfectly like this. Like, for example, a hose reel like this, you kind of have to guide this as you're rolling it up, kind of like where you want it to be. Um, so, but like something like this, when this thing guides with it, it actually rolls perfectly back the way it is. And I'll show you that here soon. So what we're going to do here first is remove this pin. I'm just going to sit it back here for now and take my hose out, my gun out here. And as you can see on the end of the gun, it comes with four different nozzles. You have 25, 0, 40, and 15. I did not put them in order. I don't know why. But anyways, zero is going to be just a perfect stream straight out. And then the higher the degree, the more spread out your, your um, pattern is going to be. So if you don't want it to be too abrasive, you're going to want to use 40. That's going to be your biggest, your biggest um, fan. Um, but for this right here, I'm actually going to use the 40 just to show you guys. And you just pull it out of the hole. This right here has got like the, the quick disconnect. You pull this back like you're connecting an air hose. You push this in and then you release. And now that's good to go. Now, <clears throat> all you gotta do is turn this on. See, once it shuts off, now it's, it's fully pressurized, the hose, and now you can actually pull the trigger on this thing and you can see your pressure here. There you go. It's actually not that loud. I thought it was gonna be a little bit louder than this, but it's not. It's pretty awesome. Now again, like I said, this is this is the 40. Um, so if you go to you know 25 or 15, it's gonna be a lot smaller of an area. And this one here is like direct, like a like a pencil point straight out. This one probably do some damage, so you don't want to use that one too often. But to give you guys a real quick look here on how this thing um, works, you, you can grab a hold of the hose here and you can pull this out. And as you can see, that little black thing I showed you earlier, right here, is actually st moving to the right as I pull. And this is a lot like an air hose, like in a, in a shop. You can pull it. And like, and then stop, and it actually stops like like that. So you can actually pull this out, and it'll stop and lock it there. Or you can go out further like this. See how that thing continues to move, and you find that sweet spot where it clicks tight like that. Now you're good to go again. So again, you can just pull a trigger. Pressure builds up, and now you're ready to to do whatever you got to do here. 
this hose is 100% replaceable. So if it ever happens to go bad or you need a replacement, you can actually replace the hose without replacing the unit. But I wanted to show you guys, this thing is 100 feet of length. So I'm gonna show you guys, even like from this far, you can really control the hose. You can, you can find that sweet spot where it sticks. Like right there. And now you can see here, it's just, that's where it's stuck. So if I wanna go a little bit further, <clears throat> I can just grab the hose and keep walking. And even from this far, guys, um, you can see here that it, there, just locked right there. So again, really nice that the hose locks. You don't have to worry about it unrolling more than you need it to be or anything like that. So whenever you're done, I wanna show you guys what I meant by that thing going back and forth, left and right. So if, if, I, if I put the hose down here, and if you see here now, because of I've pulled it so far, we are, we are, this is all the hose we have left, of course. This thing, like I said, it continues to go back and forth. And I will tell you, they grease these things very well. So it's probably something you wanna keep greased, maintain it very well so it continues to work well. But when I release it from way out there, you'll see this thing's gonna go back and forth, left and right, to make it roll back up perfectly the way it was when I showed you earlier. So again, from back here, this far, pull it a little bit to release it. And now we're just gonna go back with it here as it's rolling back up. And you can see it rolling up on the uh, thing. As you can see, it, it did go all the way back in like it's supposed to, and nothing caused any issues here, and it looks really good. A little high right there, but again, you could never do that from that far away if you're rolling it up by hand. That, there's, it'd be impossible. Once it's rolled back up, this hose is all out of the way. You can store stuff underneath this thing. You can store stuff to the side of it. Of course, I have this here, but I do keep my floor jack here, and the handle will come up here a little bit, so that's out of the way. My soap dispenser thing's back here. Nice little cubby hole. Also, I wanted to show you guys this. If you store this thing around kids, there's a little safety switch here. Switch. Go like that, and now you can't push the handle at all, and you won't have, have to worry about kids being around it um, and accidentally squeezing this handle. All right, guys. I just took off this one and put on the 15 degree, which is the strongest one, and I want to see if I can get... You can see here, someone at one point did some power washing here. You can see where it was like really dirty. Like Here's black and here's not. I want to take the power washer over this, see if I can get that to disappear. Well, not to disappear, but make it better. Look at that, guys. Look how well that's coming off of there. That's incredible. What do you guys think about that for pressure? I think that did a pretty good job. You can see there very well how much that came off. And uh, like I said, this came off pretty well. So let's get into some of the details and the technical information about this power washer, shall we? So one very important thing about power washers when you're buying one is you're wanting to know what the PSI is, like the pounds, the pressure. This has 2,500 PSI, 2,500 PSI. My gasoline one that I have, is 3,100, but again, it's gasoline. I mean, it's guaranteed, you know, obviously you're gonna get more power out of that, but that one don't work. So with this electric one, again, a 110 outlet, uh, you're getting 2,500 pounds of pressure out of this. Also from this power washer, we're gonna be getting 1.2 gallons per minute is how much water it can, it can put out. In one minute, you get 1.2 gallons, which I don't know if that's a lot or, or not, because I don't know what that one back there is, um, but that is what this one's rated for. So I already mentioned to you guys that it is completely replaceable. This entire 100-foot hose is completely replaceable. Um, it can be taken out. Um, you can buy a brand new one, and you can put it back in yourself. You don't got to send it anywhere. You don't have to get a whole new machine. Completely replaceable by the manufacturer um, by going to their website. You can buy it on there. The one thing they did do when they when they improved this this model is they reduced the sound. Um, it's not very loud at all, as you guys can see. I am very sensitive hearing. That's why I always have um, earmuffs handy so I can always put them on when I'm doing anything in the garage or mowing grass. I wear earplugs. Uh, this I did not need to wear earplugs. And the nice thing about it is too is you're not actually standing beside it when you're running it. You're all you know you're out there doing stuff, so you're, the sound is very very minimal. All right, guys. So to Finish up this part of the video um, before, before we get back to the Corvette issues. I just wanted to give my honest review. I think this is a great product. Now I've only used it the time you guys have seen me. 
um, but, but definitely works better than I expected. And as you guys can see out there, it worked phenomenal. I'm very excited to use this in the near future. Um, and although it is getting cold now, I'm gonna have to put this away for the year, but in the springtime, get it out. I'll be able to do a lot of stuff with this. It's really, really, really cool. And I can actually pick this up and take it to my dad's house and do something for him if he needs help with it, which makes this thing even cooler because it's really easy to move around. But I wanna tell you guys, as far as like how you can get one and the discounts available, uh, I'm gonna read it directly from my phone here so I, don't, so I get it right. After the 18th of November, you get a free splitter if you buy one. Um, so the splitter is like whenever you have a hose um, and, it, and it breaks off into two different ends. So you, you can hook two hoses to one. You get that free by using discount code DULOP. That's D-O-U-L-O-P. They are having a Black Friday sale, which runs from November 18th through the 30th. Uh, you get $75 off if you spend $600 or more, and you get $150 off if you spend $1,000 or more. There's all kinds of things in their website. I'm going to have their website listed in, in the description below. And then also from the 25th of November through the 30th, um, for their Pressure Washer Pro, you get 10% off for new, for, for new arrival discounts. And then on the day of Cyber Monday, which is November 28th, you... Um, you get a flash sale 24 hours for the basic pressure washer. They decreased the price from $309 to $279. Um, so there's some great deals going on with these. Uh, I really am excited to see if any of you guys are interested in one of these and, and perhaps maybe purchase one. If you guys do happen to get one, please let me know. I'd be interested in seeing how, what you guys' thoughts are. Um, but if you guys are interested, please go to the information in the details section of my video and you can pick yourself up one. I want to give a special, special thank you to Draft Tools. Um, I've been wanting a power washer for a couple of years now. I've, I've moved in here in 2019. And I've always wanted one. Um, I did not reach out to Draft Tools. I never even heard of Draft Tools. They reached out to me and sent this to me, and I could not be more grateful for them. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Let's see where we're at here. Oh, that's good news. Look at that. 100%, baby. So now we can just unplug her. And now we are ready for dad to come over here and help me diagnose this bad boy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, dad is here. It's been a long time since you guys have seen him on the channel. Um, I, have, I have a test light because I bought one at the Corvette show last year. So what we're gonna do to, to see if it is the alternator, which we're hoping it is, we are going to put the, you guys, most people have a little test light in their garage. Uh, just find a negative to put on the this one side and just make sure your light's coming on. As you can see there, it did illuminate. So now we're going to check to see first if the connections are good. No what? juice. No juice? No juice. No, uh, no, that'll be punch into the... So, that's weird. Right there, you got juice. Okay, so... You, so we got a bad connection here with the connector. So as you guys saw there, when Dad put this point into the actual wire, it lit up, but not on here, which means this actual terminal is not getting power, which means the old alternator can't run. So I guess if this wire is okay there, I guess it's just the end that needs replaced, right, Dad? Yep. So thankfully we have some wire here to work with. So what we're just gonna do here is just simply take this off. It's a 10 millimeter, at least on my old Nader it is. So we're just gonna take off that that um that wire off that that post and we're gonna splice her and fix her up here. As you guys can see there, that the end of this wire is uh Pretty bad shape. The actual metal part actually snapped off whenever we were loosening off the terminal. So there you can see there is there is light. I have light there. So so, need to replace so I guess this part right here that snapped off was the bad part. It was yep. not getting any, there was no power able to go through this to get to the alternator itself. So once you have that wire cut off there, um, Dad just took the, the, um, okay. the sleeving off the side. Here's what I want to do. I just want to put this on here until you get a, the right connector for it. Okay. Go ahead and start it up. So what, it what Dad just did there, because I don't have a connector. I have I have connectors, but not the right size. Mine, mine's a little too small. So I have to go to the store and get some more. But in the meantime, just to check to make sure this is it, Dad just put the wires, as you guys can see right there, in between the post. And we're going to tighten it just a little bit to see if we get um, some juice here. My dad has this thing right here. It's a voltmeter. And when you plug everything into the, the negative and positive, this will read how many volts you're, you're, you're showing. So Dad's gonna hook that up. And I'm gonna start the car up here and see what we got. Uh, 
like 17. All right, so if you guys didn't understand what we just did there, um, <clears throat> Dad was able to clean off the um, post a little bit to make sure it's a real good connection. And as you guys can see here now, it is completely where it's supposed to be, which is good news. So the alternator is good, which will save me a ton of money. Um, and the only thing I gotta do is spend like two bucks on a, uh, a little end clip, an eye thing. So thank God, God is good. I don't have to put a bunch of money into it, which is what I want right now. So uh, I have to go to AutoZone, get a little part, and we'll uh, get that installed. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to show you, I ended up getting eight gauge, quarter inch, uh, ring terminals here that come in two in a pack and then also while I was down here looking at things I noticed uh, as you can see this is pretty bad, but the uh, these um rubber vacuum seal uh, caps <laughs> are in pretty bad shape um, When I first bought this car I had a lot of vacuum issues and I tell you vacuum issues on a car cause a lot of havoc and um, the car would like sometimes and it still does, um, recently, um, like it kind of feels like a dog that doesn't have all the power, so I'm hoping that might fix the problem. What you're gonna wanna do is, you're going to slide this cable in through there, and then once it's all the way in, you're gonna grab your wire cutters here and you're gonna crimp it so it's nice and tight so that whenever, whenever you go to put this on, the stud of the alternator doesn't come off the cable. And you can see them there, they're flush with the end. And now once you have that done, you're going to just crimp these using your, you can use a pair of regular pliers on this as well. Um, I'm using these just because that's what they're meant for. But you just wanna crimp this so it's nice and tight. Just like that, you can see there where I crimped it, I crimped it in two spots. And you can see there that it did compress. So now that shouldn't pull out. So if I pull on this, yeah, she's really, really tight. So now we are good to go ahead and put this back on here, just like this, and put the nut back on. Like so. Now you just want to tighten this up. And once that's tight, you can bring this rubber boot back over and put it back over top of that stud, just like, well, just like that. My boot is a little uh, tore there, as you guys can see. Um, not a real big deal, but um, if you, if you want to get a new one of those, you can. But as you can see, that is now covered up. Everything is kind of out of the way here, and that should be good to go. So what I want to do now is to make sure that this is working is go back I already have this hooked back up to this so I want to make sure that this if this light comes on Which it does That's good news because now when I touch the, the, the nut here We're getting power so that means that the old is getting power also if you remember correctly before when we touched this nut right here It wasn't lighting up because the, the, the connection was pretty bad so I think that should fix it. Now what we gotta do is we are going to use this thing again. This thing actually came out of an old Freightliner um, tractor and trailer truck whenever my dad used to turn wrenches for a living. Uh, he took this out of there, it was an old one, and he, he now uses this to gauge batteries um, off site, which is kinda cool. Oh, and also one more thing. I just went ahead and put these new vacuum um, plugs on here and they look very good, very clean. And they fit perfectly fine. Still got plenty left over for future needs. All right, and just like last time, we are going to, any difference is dad's not here, we are going to hook up the positive to the positive side of the battery, and the negative, I'm not sorry, not battery, but the alternator, and then the negative, just gonna put it right on here, like that. And now when I turn the car on, this should, this should be reading a good number. It should be reading exactly what it should say when I start this up. Yeah, baby, perfect. Right where it needs to be. And as you can see also in here, it's right also where it's supposed to be. It's, yeah, baby. Awesome. So that 
that's all it was. It was a five dollar and forty nine cents um, fix, and but that was for two of those things. So take that in half. Very darn cheap, if you ask me. Very very happy. I didn't have to buy an alternator. So there's only one thing left to do, and that is to actually take the car for a drive, just to make sure that she's not doing any of that stupid stuff that was happening before. And believe me, I will know as soon as I pull out of the driveway because I had no power at all. Um, but because it is uh, 625 right now and the sun has set, and in this area, the deer run crazy this time of night, and there has been dead deer everywhere, I'm not taking a chance. So I'm gonna wait till tomorrow evening, whenever, I'm done with work and the sun's still up and um, take this for a drive and make sure that she is 100% good. I'm pretty, pretty certain it is, but just want to make sure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the time we are going to take Katie for a drive to see if what I fixed, what my dad and I fixed, uh, fixed the problem. So here we go. Let's hope for the best here. <clears throat> Alright, good news is the battery the battery gauge is still showing as it's charging, which is great. Let's take this sucker for a drive. So far, she is running absolutely wonderful, completely back to normal. And um, no backfiring, no spitting and sputtering, no anything weird. Because before, whenever I would give any kind of gas, it would just like... When the RPMs would go crazy, it wouldn't do anything. None of the lights were on the dash. So uh, now everything's back to normal and I'm actually really excited to see how the acceleration is now that I fixed those two vacuum leaks with those two rubber caps. So when I get up here, we'll be able to see how that is. And fourth gear. Oh yeah, she's moving pretty good. Yeah, the, the throttle seems to be very steady now. It's not like jumping at all, which is perfect. I love it. Wow, this is so exciting. I can't believe, I can't believe I almost had this thing towed. I mean, I almost had to have it towed anyways, but luckily I'm a AAA member, just so it was completely free. Um, but I cannot believe this was like a $2 fix. I'm so, so thankful because I was not anywhere ready to have to spend $175 on a brand new alternator. Wow, this is awesome. Now she's running great, guys. Full, full throttle, acceleration is great. Oh yeah. Wow, this is exciting. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys liked the pressure washer. I cannot thank Giraffe Tools enough for sending me that. It's awesome that I got that product. But I want to give a huge shout out and a thanks to all you guys because without you guys watching the video, subscribing, liking, all that stuff, Draft Tools never would have seen my video and thought, hey, we should send that guy a power washer. So thank you guys so much for everything you guys do for me. <clears throat> it does not go unappreciated, I promise. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you guys did not like this video, I'm not really sure what your problem is. <laughs> uh, but give it a thumbs up anyways. Please subscribe. Hit the notification bell and uh, look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Take care now. See you later. Bye.